Let's experiment a little bit with resizing images. Now in a previous video I demonstrated how to resize the images so that we could fit them onto our screen and we used the Tokiwoki Shrinkomatic application to do that. But what I want to do is test out some things just so that you are aware of some of the pitfalls and things that you run into with images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with our pet's PNG image. So we're going to take this picture and we're going to make some alternate versions of it in different sizes. So originally our image was 350 by 350. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this image and we're going to put it on its own line down here and put a few versions in. So originally our image was 350 pixels high and 350 pixels wide. So what we're going to be doing here is we're taking the same image that we resized down and we're going to scale it back up again. So let me save this and refresh it in the browser. And here you can see that this image scaled up to its original size is very blurry and fuzzy and it's not as sharp and detailed. Even the text in here is pixelated. And that's because it's taking the same pixels from this image and stretching it out to be really big. Now we can take an image and since this image has been resized, you can take the image and make it smaller by using the height and width attributes. So let's say I just want to change this to 100 by 100. So now I'll refresh this in the browser and we have a smaller thumbnail version of this image. So what's the problem with doing that? Well, one problem is the file size. Let me just um, open up our files and you can see that our pets file is 56 kilobytes. So this one or this 200 by 200 image is 56 kilobytes. Now if I look at the original file size before we scaled it down, it was 114 kilobytes. So we went from 114 to 56. That's a big size difference. And one of the largest things that happens is, you know, your text file is small and it gets there fast. And images are bigger files, so they take a little longer to get there. So the bigger your file size is, the longer it's going to take to load on the page. So we have this 200 by 200 image 56 kilobytes. But we're also, for this size image, we're using the same number of kilobytes. So what we would really want to do is, if this is going to be the size of the image, it's going to be 100 by 100, then we want a 100 by 100 version of that. So let's use the Shrink-O-Matic again, and we'll pull in and resize the pet's image. So I'm going to change the width to 100 by 100. This time I'm going to have it auto rename so that you can see how it does that. And I'm going to keep the same file type as a PNG. So I'm going to drag this into my Shrink-O-Matic. And it's resized it. And it has added it to my file. And now you can see our 200 by 200 is 56, our 100 by 100 is 16 kilobytes. So that means that if we had an image on our page that was this size, we could get around with 16 kilobytes instead of the 56. So if I use this extension for the 100 by 100 one, and I refresh my page, then you won't see any difference in here because now uh, this has been sized to 100 by 100. But again, we have a big savings in file size. Now let's see what happens if we replace this back with the original size image that's actually 350 pixels by 350 pixels, and then scale it down in size to be 200. This will show you another reason why it's a good idea to uh, resize your image for the actual dimensions. So in my files, 
I'm going to make a copy of the original size, right? We have the original image. And so I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to move it down into my regular files. So I'm going to use the same naming convention as the other one, width 350, height 350, which is a good way to be able to keep track of which image is which size. So what I'll do is I'm going to replace the one where we upscaled the 250 to 350. So when we re refresh this, this should look like a nice, good, crisp, clear image. So it does. So let's take this size image. So this is our original size. And say you were just being lazy and you didn't want to rescale the image. And so you're just going to go in here and say, I'm just going to say 200 by 200. So we're going to have another image the exact same size as this one, which has been scaled down and one that hasn't. So let me refresh. Okay, now side by side you can see this is the one that we scaled down to be 200 by 200. And this is one that is taking this large size image and just condensing everything into a smaller area. And you can see here that the quality of the two just aren't the same, right? This is trying to fit too many pixels into a small area and it gets fuzzy and blurry. And this is the one that has been sized to be 200 by 200 pixels. So the takeaway from this is you should scale your images so that they fit in the space designed for the layout of your page.